Greetings, folks. Welcome back to the Tractor Fella Show, where we know nothing about tractors. On today's episode, we're going to do a few odds and ends. I have a few things I'd like to finish up so I can start liquidating my stock and start investing in some more exciting things. This one will be featured in a future episode. It should be pretty easy, but I'd like to see about the battery, because it is an electric start push mower. Who knew that even existed? Talk about the Cadillac of push mowers. We're going to start off with this beautiful disaster. What? Oh, anyway, um, we got it running. We know it blows snow. It does a great job. However, it sort of runs like crap. Let's go ahead and tear off the carburetor and give it a thorough inspection. So first, if you remember, <clears throat> this worm gear popped out when we were getting it going. There's a uh, flat indexing mark on here that's supposed to prevent it from coming out. I'm guessing I was winding that baby in one direction and I got it in the right spot. Pulled it back a little bit and out she came. Also, looks like there should be a collar maybe on both sides there to help it uh, stay in place and not pop out. There's a buddy of mine that does not currently have a snowblower. His driveway is not massive or anything like that, but uh, I talked to him about it a while ago. I said, you want it? He says, well, sure. <laughs> so let's see if we can get it in a better functioning state for him. And go. Okay, there it is in all of its glory. This goes to our primer. We'll see if our uh, fuel shutoff valve actually does anything. Things are cooperating a little bit. I think I'm going to have to loosen up the carburetor and pull it off before I can get the fuel line off. They were nice enough to use a different size on the back so that you don't have to worry about having two of the same wrench. Is it a nine? It's not a frickin' nine and it's not a frickin' 10. Three eighths for the win. 20 minutes later, finally ready to take these off. The lights just flickered. Are we gonna lose power? Guess we'll find out. We just had an ice storm go through a couple days ago. That's why I'm not currently working on Old Blue for those of you that watched that episode. However, that pickup will return to the show. There we go. Phew. Yep, okay, hardware's off. Uh, that just popped out of there. This one goes in that little hole right there. So we're gonna mark that little guy. And we're gonna mark that little guy. And there is our hydrocarbon distribution center. Oh, somebody was kind enough to paint this guy again. Let's keep track of our hardware. Sorry, phone call. Anyway, uh, where is it coming out of? Whatever. At this point, it's all coming out of everywhere. I hear a couple things. The float. I also hear what might be uh, sort of like a check valve. So we're going to have to be careful with this one. Check our current setting. One half. And there's more gas coming out. Where is it coming out of? It's coming out of the fuel line this time. Why is it deciding? Oh, whatever. One. Was that one and a half? I lost count because the freaking gas kept coming out. I already forgot how many that was. They call me the 10 second Tom of mixture screws. Whatever, it's on video. You know, I know. We'll get to it. Eh. Not bad. Pretty clean overall. See how much stuff comes off of it. Yeah, it was dirty a little bit. Nothing, nothing show stopping. Do we dare take the bowl off? Yes, yes we do. Maybe I have the right size? I do. What a great day. Let's see what we have in here, other than a very long threaded uh, jet. So we have our jet and our needle, aka our jeetle. You can see right through there, no issues with that. Time for some bowl removal action. Everyone uses the screwdriver. There we go. That gasket looks pretty healthy. Hey, look. I can drain some gas. And the bowl is super clean. That gas is freezing my fingers. That looks all nice and clean too. Man, I keep taking these carburetors apart and they're all clean. Okay, so did we hear that? Down in here is a little sort of check valve. I have no idea what it does. I've been told that Terrell Fixes All knows what it does. All right, well. With it in the down position, one half, one, that's it, one. Also looks pretty healthy. 
Yeah, I don't think our emulsion tube's coming out. Let's just say I don't want to take it out because I don't want to damage it. All right, so if you look at this like so, you can see down in there, it looks like a, basically a hole, right? If I flip this upside down, like so, now you can sort of see that something's in the way. Let's go back to the other way again. Open port. Blockage. Okay, so it's like a check valve that's in there. Good news is that it still moves. 1161E6F. I have my bristle. We're going to check out that little teeny hole right there. There. Oh, oh, went right through. No problem. Let's go ahead and poke around right down the middle. See the bristle? Nice and clear there. Fuel inlet is good. There's nothing wrong with this carburetor. Why does it run like crap at idle? I'll have to go reference Mr. Terrell's video. Could also be the simple fact that I never once tried to adjust the mixture setting on the idle screw. Oh, shit. where did that come from? Did it come right out of there? That would be my guess. Okay, we'll put that there and I'll review the footage later. Should we ultrasonic this for good measure? Let's not. I'm just talking to myself, honestly. At this point, I'm sure most of you are sleeping. I need to change the channel name to The Lullaby Garage. Having trouble sleeping at night, folks? Tune into The Lullaby Garage for a new episode of soothing, eyelid closing, drifting off to sleep entertainment. We'll see you then. Quick side note, I found a video editor that doesn't suck and it should give me considerably better resolution than what we were dealing with before. I don't hear anything. Need to get some Brasso. You guys ever use Brasso before? It's a brass cleaner. Man, I'll tell you what, you can make your brass shine. So I'd like to thank Andy. Andy, you were the one who brought it to my attention about the Terrell Fixes All video, most deadly snowblower ever, and the little brass tube that's in there. We'll have to go back and revisit the carburetor on the Craftsman wood chipper, because that's where I may have smashed the brass pill. Anyway, we're in good shape because it moves. I've said that about a million times. I went back to that video and looked at it some more. And it turns out that there is a vent right here that is completely plugged. It's an atmospheric vent. It vents our bowl to the atmosphere. Terrell said that some of these have a nice big hole and some of these have a super micro hole. Looks like we have the super micro hole. We're making some progress. Oh, there we go. We are through. Why would, I mean, why would you incorporate a vent that's that teeny? I don't have uh, welding tip cleaners, so I just use the bristle from a brush. Oh, there we go. Where's it going to come out? Oh, there it is. That's kind of what I figured it would do. There we go. So there's your vent to atmosphere, okay? Just like the vents on a carburetor in a vehicle. It goes right through there. Terrell, if you're watching. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, thanks, dude, for the information. That's good stuff. I'm going to go blow off all the cleaner on this and be right back. We are ready for reassembly. That's good for it. Help it maintain its shape. I'm going to check the function. Cannot move any air when it's upside down. Needle and seat seems to be working just fine. Gross. Let's get our bowl back on here. Hopefully that seals again. Probably not. Is that another seal right there? Why is that? don't know why that would be there. One half, one. We'll do one and a half. See how that goes. Now on this one on the side, we need to set that needle for the idle screw when the carburetor is in the upright position. It is upright, and I do not see any little objects in the way. Terrell said, he said the spec is seven eighths. We're going to do one because that's what he always does. Okay. One half and one. Okay. That's it. That was pretty boring. Let's see what happens. Greetings folks. It is another day. Let's get this beautiful little machine reassembled and give her another go. Put that through there and put that through there. Get the fuel line back on. There we go. Get some nuts. 
Whoop. Oh, great. Dropped it in an impossible spot. Most important tool in the garage. Primer bulb. Reconnected. This. I gotta bring back in a half turn. And I can do that with my fingers. So there's that. Let's give it a test run. Of course, I'm running low on my gas supply. Hopefully that'll be enough. Get the fuel open back up. Well, we survived another ice storm. Makes going down your driveway a lot of fun. Should have heard it last night I could hear across the field tree branches cracking and falling. The trees, when the wind was blowing, sounded like a bunch of glow sticks being cracked open. It was uh, something else. Okay, I'm gonna give it some primes, choke it. We'll listen to the pigs being fed, because I time that perfectly every time. Oh, sunshine. That is so nice. Please stay out. No, no, uh, and it's gone. Choke, primer, throttle, ignition. Almost. I'd say we have a functioning idle circuit, huh? <laughs> How low can you go? <laughs> oh, it's the Harley of Toro snowblowers. That is awesome. I finally finished a... Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't finish the project yet. We're almost done, though. It sounds like it's raining right now because the ice is melting off the trees. It's really very pretty. Unfortunately, the trees don't like it. You got lots of uh, down branches across roads and stuff like that when this happens. One thing I did want to do is uh, run the bowl out of fuel since we're about done for the season. There we go. So what do you think we should do about this? Do we just leave it as designed? I don't know how the heck I managed to get it out of there. Ouch, that felt good. But if it's happened once, it'll happen again. Ideally, something like this would be awesome for the end, but I do not have any of those. So we're gonna go a little above and beyond. All right, you probably guessed it, or maybe you didn't guess it, but looks like it originally had one of those caps on there. If I can get it started. Yep, we're making threads. Yeah. Apparently I need to invest in all the uh, machine shop toys. <laughs> yeah, right. Now this should just go right on there and interference fit itself into place. Getting pretty good at making my own threads these days. <laughs> now for the crowning moment. That is on there, it is tight, and the best part There we go. Use the tools you have, right? Well, I think other than a little bit of a power wash, 
and definitely an oil change. I think we're done here. Snowblower, you're a great little machine. On to the next toy. Just a little side note, this dog has interesting talents for being able to balance sticks in the most unique areas. And I am not joking, that was not me. He stuck that there all by himself. So intense. You're a big pain in my butt, aren't you, Titan? Yeah, yeah, you are. Okay, go play. This is uh, probably gonna turn out to a carburetor party video, but those of you that have not seen this video series, boop, you can go check it out up there. Uh, this has the same carburetor as our snowblower, and I didn't know about the check valve inside of it, so I may have destroyed it. Step one, air filter. Turns a little bit, pulls right off. Step two, I wanna take this plate off. I think I need to get a fuel line off of here first. There we go. That was painful, literally and figuratively. Hole there, hole there. We'll just leave you right there. Here we are again. Low speed could be what I ruined. Actually, I'm not freaked out anymore for the simple reason of, listen, The little guy's still moving in there. This is great news, and check that out. My vent is open. Also good news. That was pretty much it. Those were like the only things we needed to worry about. However, idle circuit still sucks. Let's tear it apart anyway. Really enjoying those birds right now. This should go out just the same as the other, which is one turn. How's our jet? You can see right through it. Got our jet and our needle. Yet again, our Jeetle. Anyone else having deja vu right now? Still clean, because we've already done this before. And listen. Let's check out that little teeny hole in there. There we go, and it is clear. Interesting. There are like three randomly drilled holes in the side. wonder if those are for... Well, actually, I have no clue what those are for. Maybe Terrell can answer that, since he watches my videos. <laughs> oh, I'm a funny guy. I am a funny guy. Well, that one's got a bit of a better-sized hole in it. Oh, Bristle, where are you? There you are. Our vent is open. I think we got lucky last time with it coming out the bottom. Turn up the brightness. And you can sort of see, ah, there it is, right there, there you can see, open port, and blocked off. All right, this is great. My super excitement for the day. What am I missing? Anything. I don't think so. I'm going to go blow out some passages. We'll be right back. And back together we go. Upside down, right side up. Little brass washer is still there. One half, and one. Made in USA. There are little ports on the side as well of this jet, but I believe this one's nice and clear. Yes, it is. See? Needle. Okay, we are seated. Same thing, one half, and one. And here we go. Put this guy back on here. And it's gone. Switching nuts. You never know when you gotta switch to a different nut. Let's get a little light on the situation. Boop. Ah, that was fun again. Almost forgot the fuel line. Alright, turning fuel on. Do we even have any? Yes, we do. Wow, the fuel shutoff works in the off position, but turn the fuel on and it leaks ex externally. <laughs> All right, let's get you at a safe spot here. Don't need any of you trying to lose a phalange. Choke, throttle, spark, oil, and go. Try. Tell she's still feeling abused. I told her to quit smoking, but she just won't listen.
Will it idle? No. So I moved it back so that it won't take as much throttle. Okay, so this one did not like the one turn out for the idle. This one wants more like seven eighths or three quarters of a turnout. All right, let's send some smoke signals. Next on our list is this little guy. Oh yeah. Man, that's a nice clean little machine. And I gotta tell you, I love that color. But one thing I didn't do, wanted to find a new screw for our case. And also I bought some duck bill check valves. And I'd like to put one in the gas tank. Because currently it's pretty much just open to atmosphere. And go. For those of you that haven't seen this episode, boop, you can find it right there. Found this machine on the side of the road. Surprise, surprise. My specialty. Handle off. Side cover. Off. Gas tank. Where is that little hole? Great. I'm going to have to remove the other half of the cover, aren't I? See if we get the click. Oh man. Okay, let's see if that fits in our parts bin. Nope, not quite. Not now, we should be able to slide the entire assembly out. Throttle linkage. For those of you that have not seen the other episode, you're gonna chuckle at the reason I'm tearing this whole thing apart. Where is it? <sighs> well, a couple things I'd just like to point out. First of all, there's the frickin' hole right the frick there that I need to put the one-way check valve in, which I could have done easily. So that's the crappy part. But, but, the good part is I did have this installed incorrectly, and we need to fix that anyway, which requires a partial case disassembly, so it wasn't a total waste. I freaked out for a minute, but I'm feeling good about it now. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, let's go find our duck bills. I refer to this as my small engine tool kit. Where did I put those? Ah! There you go. These little teeny meatballs are one-way check valves, so that as the fuel level drops, it allows air in. However, when you're using the chainsaw and you tip it on its side, it does not allow fuel to come out. And that's all that little guy does. So I took a second there to see who suggested the use of the duckbill valve. And wouldn't you know it, it's Andy again. Thank you, Andy. You're a big help. Looks like whatever duckbill was in here before has turned into sludge. Can you see it? You can see it. Well, it's in the gas tank now. <laughs> I do believe that should just kind of clip into place. 
There we go. That's all she wrote. And there were a few of you, I'm sorry I do not have your names on tap, that actually said this needs to go underneath because it is actually used to make sure the intake doesn't suck the filter in. <laughs> I was pretty surprised to hear that because, I mean, that means the filter just sort of sits on top and just hangs out. But I like to listen to the people that decide to listen to me ramble about. So thank you folks, whoever you are, for telling me that this actually goes in first. That little guy just sits there. I guess it's held in by the uh, part of the cover, probably. That was a pretty straightforward fix for this little guy. Let's go ahead and put her back together. There we go. Don't need to show all of this. Spark plug. And we're back. Sorry about the hissing in the background, but it's getting cold outside, and so I fired up the propane. I don't have a perfect match by any means, but it's the same, same thread, same thickness. We'll tuck it underneath here. No one will see it. And soft mode. And last, but not least, is the handle. And we are done. We're going to do one more thing, and that'll be it for this video. Well, here we are, working on a shop light. At this point in the night, my wife has decided she wants to hang out in the garage, play some loud music, and YouTube won't be having that. I've dropped this light so many times it stopped working. And here I am telling you I unplugged it. Okay, let's pop out some screws. It's really cool. Taking the case apart. Oh, we got a wire that's off. That's not cool. Oh, look at the switch. Oh, switch disconnected. Wait, what? The wire just fell off? Well, that's kind of weird. Whatever. Anyway. Oh, got a little bit of an arc spot there. Let's file that down. Oh, oh man, the plug fell apart. Well, that's okay. We'll use the other half. Oh, no, we won't. The other half just fell off too. That is a bummer. Well, at least the other wire is going to be okay. Oh, no, the other wire is falling apart, too. How disappointing. Let's drop everything out of the frustration. Hey, look what I found. I got a connector. I wonder, does it fit? It fits. Best day ever. Oh, well, here we are. This connector's junk. Let's do the snippy snippy. And on the other side, we're going to snip that off, too. Okay. Oop, stripper time. Let's strip off that wire. Come on. Oh, there we go. Uh, where does this white wire go? Uh, we'll figure that out later. Okay, stripper time again. Get it off. Get it ah, No, there we go. Okay, let's just put the wire on here, ignoring the fact that the brass contact for the plug is actually laying on the bench behind the fixture, but that's okay. We'll find that out later in frustration. Okay, we got a new connector here. Which crimpy crimpy do I use to squeeze that on there? Uh, I don't know. We'll just pick one. There we go. That one works. Squeeze it again. Yeah. Oh, yep. Time for the next one. Don't really need to watch it all over again, but I'm... Uh, yeah, okay, we're done. We're That's better. Oh, look. It's the brass piece. And drop it out of frustration. Okay, well, we have found the brass piece. Let's go ahead and put it back in place. Uh, why is the camera fuzzy? Why? Oh, there we go. Now we can actually see what's going on. Big breath. And we're going to loosen that. And then we're going to tighten it back down. Now the piece is back where it's supposed to go. Oh, let's do some wire management. Uh, let's put this back on. Um, actually, also, it's not a switch. It is a circuit breaker. Just in case someone tries to plug in like an air compressor into this thing. Let's go ahead and put it back into its spot. Uh, those are kind of sticking out a little ways. Let's just give them a little tweak since we don't have the 90 degree connectors that originally came on this. And let's check out the cover. Does it fit? Uh, not so much. Let's go ahead and bend those at a ridiculous angle with the wire strippers. That'll fix our problems. There we go. Let's plug them back in. And does it fit? Not that great. Let's go ahead and force it into position. That a boy. There we go. Clean the contact. And let's thread in the ball. 
time to plug in the electricity and oh look at it my wife actually looked over at that moment and she goes oh well good job honey <laughs> i said thanks sweetie <laughs> all right reassembly is complete and bob is your uncle in the next project, I forgot to put back a piece of an exhaust into one of the chainsaws. You guys want to hear a really fat cat purring? Did you catch that? Yeah, she's uh, extremely obese and she's hanging out on my lap. It's like a massive warm blanket just chilling on your body. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. I forgot to put back a piece of an exhaust. And so we are attempting to do that with this chainsaw. Only problem is that it's the wrong chainsaw. So we'll go ahead and skip to the end where I'm like, uh, you moron. And we're getting close, popping out the last screw. Hey, check it out, guys. Here's the piece. I got to put it back in. Oh, wait a minute. Did I pick the wrong saw? Well, maybe I can just, you know, put it in there and, um, Oh, what a waste of time. And from here, we go back to reassembly, which I don't want to watch, and I know you don't want to watch. Who's ready for more fun? Set it down all dramatic-like. Let's remove these bolts. Let's remove this muffler. Let's go ahead and have a look. Oh, wow, this would have been so much easier than the other saw. Bye-bye, shield. Hello, peace. Good boy, that's where you go. Hello, shield again. Hello, muffler. Zzz, rat a tat. Zzz, rat a tat. And done.